Welcome to Songwriters from Here and Away. This is a show that focuses on new and established songwriters from Atlanta, Canada, across Canada, and around the world. This episode is an evening with Dave Carroll. Dave has been playing most of his life with Sons of Maxwell, then as a solo artist, and had great success with United Breaks Guitars. And he's also an author of children's books, and he's been touring the world as a public speaker. Here he is, Dave Carroll. You're here at the Carlton, yep. and we've got a sell-out crowd, which is nice. Congratulations. Thank you. So, uh, this is the best listening room in Halifax, probably. Yep. And... Uh, that's what I'm doing tonight. It's all the songs I'd like people to listen to, so this yeah. is great. Good, and you've got a new album on deck? So it's called Until One Day, and it's it's uh, it was released during the pandemic, so I think it's probably been two years, but it feels like right. yesterday. Right, and you've, you've been writing a bit lately, I know. I've kind of caught wind of that, I guess. Yeah. Is your style changing? How do you, how, where, where do you uh, feel about that? I don't really uh, consciously try and and zero in on a direction. I go where, right. where, wherever the, it takes me. So okay. sometimes they're silly, and sometimes they're super serious, and sometimes they matter a lot to somebody else when I write songs for other people. Right. And uh, uh, I just try and bring my A-game to whatever project I'm on and try to serve the song. Nice. Good. So when you start writing, uh, whether it's a commission or not, do you kind of have a, a pattern to how you develop it? Do you, is it music? Is it lyri- lyrics? How do you start at that end? I'm, I'm always a music first guy. Yeah. I don't know what you do, but uh, for me, it's basically, I think Paul McCartney did that. The music was set in stone almost, and then he he would just sort of utter the, the famous yesterday thing, right? Yeah, Scrambled eggshells eggs. and whatever. Yeah. yeah, and that's kind of what I do. If, if you heard me writing a song, it, it would sound like gibberish probably, but the music was very much uh, sort of... Uh, set in stone in a sense. Right. I'm open to changing it, but that's where I start. Right. Get good. a groove and get a feel. So did everybody have a good uh, hurricane? Yeah. My power came on around one o'clock today. I was prepared to play dirty tonight. I was going to go. I was thinking that maybe all these years ironing a shirt and brushing my teeth was holding me back from being successful. I was going to let her rip tonight. And then I thought, now I'll must use my power is on. I'll iron my shirt. So I got my good shirt on. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready to begin? Are you ready to dig in? Can you feel it in your bones? Can you sense it in your skin? The train has left the station and it's time to sink or swim. Are you ready? It's time to earn the pennies from those who pay for thoughts that's the way it rolls Cause yesterday is over And the road to here was rough And you're finally in the moment And you've waited long enough Are you ready To begin Are you ready To commence to Come together Get off the fence Mr. Romeo was nothing Without his Juliet The band has started cooking And the table has been set Are you ready? It's time to earn the pennies From those who pay for thoughts That's the way it rolls Cause yesterday is over And the road to here was rough And you're finally in the moment And you've waited long enough Don't hold back or hide away It's just a one-night stand And if you second-guess yourself Say, na-na-na-na-na-na I am ready To begin Na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na-na Na 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 na
Thank you. Uh, this is a song that I wrote during the pandemic, right in the very beginning of it all, when Italy had been shut down and we couldn't believe that was happening, and then they started shutting things down here. We'll just wait for you to get that. <laughs> just kidding. And uh, so the, the pandemic's happening, the, the lockdowns are happening, and like songwriters normally do, we write songs about stuff. And uh, so I came up with this title called When the World Stops Ending. And I thought it sounded like a good thing, so I called my friend Jamie Robinson. He lives down the street from me in Waverly. And uh, because it was a lockdown, we couldn't get together to write it, so we had to do it over Zoom. So I'd never written the song over Zoom before, but uh, we did it quickly, maybe a couple of one-hour sessions, and it really came together. And we were happy with it, and so he recorded his parts at his place, I recorded mine at mine, and then we sent it to Dave Gunning and Picto, and he mixed it. No one was ever in the same room together, and then we decided we wanted to do a video for it. So during the lockdown, uh, I thought it'd be cool to go to the Neptune Theater. And I called and they said, if you don't have anyone with you, just like a couple people in the group and no, no other people in the audience, I said, that's exactly what I want. I want to be on stage playing to an empty theater to really drive home this starkness of the, uh, of the pandemic. And so we got there and my friend Steve Richard was there and Jamie, and uh, we shot this thing in a couple of hours to the empty theater and I watched the video and the first thing I thought is, this reminds me a lot of my earlier gigs. But uh, we came up with this, and this, the, the message in the song, I guess, is that coming out of this, you could be a fearful, or you could try to be kinder and love people better than you ever did before, and that's the message of this song. When the world stops ending and we catch our breath Will we know ourselves better at all? What will life look like and what will be left? Will we have the same problems to solve? When the world stops ending and we're back on our feet what will we do with our time? Will we place our importance on the bitter or sweet? Or leave what is best left behind? From here to Manhattan, I hope that it happens. We love so much better than ever before. And find buried treasure in the moments we measure And help one another without keeping score When the world stops ending once more When the world stops ending and we hit restart what will be first on our list will we fill every hour from daylight to dark to make up for all that we missed will a new light erase will our fear be replaced when the world stops ending We love so much better than ever before We find buried treasure in the moments we measure And help one another without keeping score When the world stops ending from here to Manhattan I hope that it happens We love so much better than ever and never before and find buried treasure in the moments we measure and help one another without keeping score when the world stops ending and we catch our breath 
Will we know ourselves better at all? So, how many people here have seen Outlander? Yeah. Are there any guys that have seen Outlander here? Because I think it's mostly women, right? So, that, one of the stops in, uh, on this Scottish trip will be to where they shot some of the thing, things from Outlander. And, uh, and so, of course, if you've seen Outlander, you know the guy's name is... Jamie. Jamie. <laughs> Jamie's the guy from, like, 1650 that... He, that uh, He's, he's, he's the guy that no man can come close to. He's the man that uh, every man wants to be but can never be. And, uh, and that's my wife's favorite show. Jill loves Outlander. <laughs> so we, uh, we were watching an episode of Outlander on a school night one time. And uh, the kids are asleep. We watch the episode. We go to bed. And I jump in first. And I'm just sitting there. And, and then all of a sudden, I started thinking, how are you doing? <laughs> I was feeling a little frisky. And uh, so she's getting ready for bed, but I realized that I just watched an, o an episode of Outlander with her. She wasn't going to be interested in me at all. <laughs> so I had to draw her in, right? I had to channel my best Jamie, and I said, ooh, look at you with your smooth legs, another beauty. <laughs> it affected her. But the minute I said it, I said, that's a good song title. I said, I'll be right back. And I got up and I wrote this song. <laughs> She was a runaway, running my way. You'd think she already knew me. I didn't have a plan. She could have run to a better man. But like a freight train, she roared into me. With her smooth legs and other beauty. And I miss the days when we were just beginning. Lying in bed together, I felt like living. And I held her so close, and she drew me absolutely to her smooth lay. Smooth legs and other beauty Now the years roll And the space grows For kids, careers, and life's duties But my memory's long And there's moments when I'm gone to a time that woman first moved me With her smooth legs and other beauty mm -hmm. And I miss the days When we would just be getting Life Together felt like living And I held her so close And she drew me Absolutely To her smooth legs Smooth legs and other beauty Sometimes when life gets in the way You can't even scrounge One lazy day for tousled hair and letting down our guard All coiled into each other Sharing secrets of the heart And I missed the day When we were just beginning Lying in bed Together felt like living And I had close and she drew me absolutely to her smooth legs smooth legs in other beauty
smooth legs in other beauty. I also know that you're creative in a lot of other ways, mm -hmm. and I read through your Tom the Tomato plant, yes. and I love that. It was great to see that take off for you. I mean, how's that doing for you at the writing end? Uh, really well. I'm, yeah. It's, it didn't start off with a with an idea of that I will now be a children's author. I wrote the the story for my sons. Right. And and it turned into I shared the story with a friend who'd written kids books, and he said you got to write a kids book about this. And he sort of pushed me, and Paul Tuffinello was his name, and and he uh, really encouraged me to see it through. So the book sort of just became a thing. Took off on its own. And uh, now I really enjoy complementing what I I do, like a shows like this with right. school shows. Right. So I'll go in and I'll I'll talk to kids and, and share music with them and it's not yeah. that different than this show that's the funny thing right yeah it's 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 still the entertainment and delivering messages and stories and but and, the songs are the same and, I'll, and I'll the be same singing songs? I'll be singing this the theme song of Tom the tomato plant tonight uh, but I sing it to the kids and I tell them about United Brakes guitars uh, right. I once did a, a speaking gig to the board of directors of a major cruise line so big, uh, successful business people in the right. room, right? And I gave them my presentation, and two days later, I was at Park Street School in Fredericton, and I gave the exact same presentation and to the kids. You get a standing O wherever you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, you know, that's, it's, that's really cool. I mean, that's a good thing about a good delivery and a good song and a good message. It can, but I, I think it has it to goes do, a lot of ways. I think it has to do with the universal truths. So yeah. rather than at a, at a board meeting, I'm not going to be the smartest guy in the room telling them how to run their business, but I can speak about universal truths that can resonate with them. Right. And kids, their brains aren't even fully developed. They don't understand highbrow things, but neither do I. So it's convenient. You don't. So I, t I speak from the heart, <laughs> yeah. and it lands, on the, it lands the same way whether you're 4 or 84. Right. You're listening to Dave Carroll live at the Carlton here in Halifax. Please look up Songwriters from Here and Away on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and Songwriters from Here and Away at gmail.com. Send us a note. We'd love to hear from you, find out what you'd like to hear on the show. Now back to Dave. Another United Brakes Guitars ripple was I was speaking at an event in Clearwater, Florida a few years back, and um, a woman came up. It was, it was, the gig was for a bunch, 500 fire chiefs, I think. And, uh, and I had been a volunteer firefighter, so there was that connection. And this little woman about that tall, her name is Vicki Pritchett from South Carolina. She came up and said, Dave Carroll, you got to write a song for the National Fall of Firefighters of America. <laughs> and she was one of these people you don't say no to. So I said, okay, I'll try it. And, uh, and so I took a shot at it. And uh, they have an event every year in Emmitsburg, Maryland. And any firefighter that dies on the job gets memorialized every year at uh, a cenotaph of sorts. You get your name put on the wall. And it's a big event. Thousands of people show up with a couple hundred pipers. And it's uh, just a very classy event. And uh, the families show up. And they take turns naming each person. They get their name on the picture on the screen. And they get a flag. And uh, they come up and they, they receive the flag. And they get a moment, uh, everybody. And so it's about 100 people a year, it seems. And uh, I get to sing this song. It's sort of the closing song now at this event, and it's, uh, it's highly uh, emotional at times. And uh, so last year, I was, I was there in Emmitsburg in October, and it was a really sunny day, and they said, we had a, they had a green room in the back, and they, for some reason they said, we don't want anybody here today, so you just gotta go out and sit in the, in, uh, in the stands. And so I was sitting there, and it was, I was starting to get sunburnt and sweaty, and I was looking at all these people, and they were crying and everything, and I'm thinking, I gotta sing in a minute here. So I, I went back to the green room, and I'm standing there, and these two guys in machine guns come in on either side, and, and it turns out the Department of Homeland Security Secretary Mayorkas comes in, and it's just me and him in this green room, and uh, he says, I'm Secretary Mayorkas. I said, I'm Dave Carroll. And then, and then that's all we had. <laughs> these guys are watching me like a hawk, right? And then they, they left, and the, the lady had said, you're not supposed to be here. The secretary's there. I said, I know. I just met him. <laughs> Anyway, here's, here's the song. It's called The Fallen and the Brave. There's a saying in our firehouse that everyone goes home. 
And we know the perils in our job every time we hear the tone. day we fought a blaze we did our job for lives were saved but in the end i sacrificed my own i hear bells in the distance pipers playing a song for me where flags are folded in our memory I'm going home to Emmitsburg They'll call my name in Emmitsburg Where tears are shed and prayers are heard For the fallen and the brave There is peace among the embers A lightness in the air as I float above the members of my station in despair and Through the smoke we face our fears The lives we save to souvenirs I go without regret as I declare I hear bells in the distance Pipers playing song for me where flags are folded in our memory I'm going home to Emmitsburg they'll call my name in Emmitsburg where tears are shed and prayers are heard for the fallen and the brave and the family that we leave behind We'll gather where I'll be enshrined Along with all the others And they'll see we're not alone And the names carved in the monument Say it loud and confident We'll never be forgotten And we've made it safely home I hear bells in the distance Pipers playing A song for me Where flags are folded In our memory I'm going home to Emmitsburg They'll call my name in Emmitsburg Where tears are shed and prayers are heard For the fallen and the brave And we're tears shed and prayers are heard for the fallen and the brave thank you So I had a chance to go to Nashville a few times and, and uh, write with other songwriters. And of course, uh, Nashville has some of the best songwriters in the world. And uh, my very first co-writing appointment was with a guy named John Vesner. And uh, he's married to Kathy Matea and he had a Grammy and everything. And, and uh, yeah, so that was a pretty cool experience. And we wrote a pretty good song and, it, and put it on the Sons of Maxwell record. And uh, I guess he was happy enough that it, when I came back a, another time, I asked him to write, he said, sure. Uh, so we got together and we were writing a song about just places that we'd been about been to in the world and we came to the idea that maybe home isn't where uh, uh, home is where your heart is at not necessarily where you hang your hat at the moment and, and uh, so we came up with this song called The Place That I Call Home Prevail upon the Cabot Trail on Cape Breton's northern shore. And from those cliffs, it feels as if you're looking down through heaven's 
this floor There's a spot where you can walk Near the top of Salt Mountain Where the bighorn sheep High above Banff streets Leaves your heart full as a fountain But of all those places Those high up spaces Wherever I may roam have I felt so grounded and so surrounded by a love I've never known? Like the place that I call home. And I've seen firsthand the Canyon Grand in the state of Arizona. God's perfume, the cactus bloom from Tucson to Sedona. In the fields of wheat, in the summer heat that reach across Nebraska, the Northern Lights finale above the Matanuska Valley. Light up all Alaska But of all those places Those wide open spaces From Austin clear to no home Have I felt so lifted So deeply gifted In a way I have never known Like the place that I call home It doesn't matter where it is From sea to shining sea It's anywhere that my heart lives That's where home is to me And of all those places Either small or spacious from Calcutta to Cologne Am I at my best Where my soul can rest For I never walk alone or Have I felt God's grace Ever bless a place In a way I have never known So I do a lot of traveling. I've flown a lot in the last uh, 10 or 12 years. And uh, because of the United Breaks Guitars, I ended up starting speaking. So I would travel around to conferences and, and uh, tell the United Breaks Guitars story and get paid to tell people just to be nice to each other. And, and I discovered there's a whole segment of a culture in the speaking culture. Speakers are like musicians, just different. And uh, it's amazing and that I come from the music background, so I approached uh, gigs like a musician. And, and if I was going to a town to do a one-hour talk, and it was a beautiful spot, I might bring a bigger suitcase to pack hiking boots if it's near the mountains or something like that. I would stay a little extra, but 
A lot of uh, speakers tend to just try to get there and leave as soon as they possibly can to go to the next place. So they never pack a suitcase. I get a lot of grief from my speaker friends. They say, you're packing a, like a giant suitcase. What are you doing with that? And I say, you don't even have enough underwear for this trip. What are you doing with no suitcase? <laughs> and uh, it bothered me so much that I wrote a song about it called The Medium Suitcase. <laughs> it's the middle ground. I'm all about the middle ground. Right? So uh, I need you to help me with this one. And, uh, I'm going to sing him, Co covered by my medium suitcase. So this chord here, it's got that train sound, right? It's got that, sounds like a train, and I'm trugging along. So when I get to the end of the chorus on that, I'm going to say, covered by my medium. I want you to sing the word suitcase with me, but I want you to do this. <laughs> right? So do that. Look at the person beside you and make that surprise face like this. One, two, three, go. That's what I'm talking about. Now, I don't know why this makes me feel so good on the inside when I do it, but I think it'll happen to you, too, if you do it. You're flying on a business trip. For five days, you'll be overseas. An airline lost your suitcase once, and you despise their baggage fees. You're confident your tiny bag, your cabin-friendly carry-on, can do the job and save the day. But don't be foolish, you are wrong. You need a medium suitcase, not one that's too big or too darn small. You can't leave home and bring it all, and so I travel light but used to overpack. I'm a man who likes an option when I get to where I'm at. If I accidentally stain my shirt or want my dressy slacks, I'm covered by my medium suitcase. I used to pack most everything, tools, clothes, the kitchen sink, and who leaves home without their ukulele? My bag was huge and overweight, I'd never use them roller skates, but had them just in case, who could blame me? Then it finally occurred to me that hotels had their own TVs, and I should scale back ASAP and stop acting so darn crazy and check a smaller bag so to make my travels easy easy on yourself get a medium suitcase not one that's too big or too darn small you can't leave home and bring it all and so i travel light but used to overpack i'm a man who likes an option when i get to where i'm at if I accidentally stain my shirt or want my dressy slacks, I'm covered by my medium suitcase. <laughs> it's not that I love luggage belts, it's just that I have always felt that people who don't check a bag are crazy. They think they got it figured out, will turn their undies inside out as though they're clean and act as fresh as daisies. But they're lying to themselves And they're often prone to smell By day three of a four-day spell So maybe they should stop acting so darn lazy And check a bigger bag So as not to be so gamey No one likes to stink Get a medium suitcase Not one that's too big or too darn small you can't leave home and bring it all And so I travel light but used to overpack I'm a man who likes an option when I get to where I'm at If I accidentally stain my shirt or want my dressy slacks I'm covered by my absolutely perfect little travel body Covered by my medium suitcase That was awesome! I must say, I've um, followed your career before we moved here with United Breaks Guitars, I guess. And what was that, 12 years ago now? Yeah, 2009, That's 14 years 14 now. years yeah. ago. And then moved out here and, and, and met you along the way and have been really happy to see and impressed with your resilience and parlaying it now into the public speaking and, and almost consulting-like. What's the status of it for you now? 
I'm still active in it, and yeah. I don't just do one thing. When when United Breaks Guitars came out, the disappointing thing was that a lot of people in the music industry assumed because I'd started speaking that I wasn't a musician anymore. Right. And I said, why would you say that? And they said, well, because you're speaking. But I'm I'm just Dave Carroll. I'm a storyteller. I had to think right. about what I was, and, yeah. and ultimately, I'm a storyteller. It's it's. Uh, maybe a bad metaphor, but it's like smoking. You can get your nicotine through uh, chewing tobacco or a pipe or a cigarette. It's just a delivery device changes, but the ultimate thing is I'm a storyteller. Right, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And and may you have better effects than the nic- nicotine. Yeah, I, mean, <laughs> I, I hope my music doesn't cause cancer. I don't know. So one of the things I did in the pandemic was I, uh, I wrote a book called Tom the Tomato Plant. And uh, so I have two sons, Flynn and Fisher, and they're 14 and 11 now. And uh, I actually wrote this story... Uh, probably before the pandemic, but finished it off and turned it into a book. And, uh, and so we would often uh, lie together in bed and we'd riff stories. They could sometimes come up with the conditions. It'd be like, uh, they call my mom Nan, so it'd be sometimes Nan has to wear a jet pack, she needs to go to the moon, and that sort of thing, and then I would just <laughs> come up with a story. And uh, so on this one day, uh, I'm lying in bed with Fisher, my youngest, and he's a little bit upset going to bed. And it turns out that he was at church with my dad. My mom and dad are here, by the way. And, uh, and so they were at, uh, Fisher was at church with my dad, and he's coming home, and I guess it was wintertime. And uh, my dad's probably focused on driving like he should be, but Fisher said, what's that over there? And he pointed to the cemetery. And my dad said, well, that's where you go when you die. And that was his complete death and dying talk. Yeah. Right? <laughs> So I'm lying in bed with Fisher, and he's like, Dad, I don't want to be in a box under the snow for all eternity when I die. And so I came up with this story about the story arc of a tomato plant named Tom, who's smaller than all the rest when he's going to the farmer's market. And uh, they put them on the farmer's market table, which is the vegetarian in the book. And, uh, and uh, he gets left behind because he's smaller than all the rest, and nobody wants him. And he knows eventually that he's never going to get a forever home. So he's forlorn and dejected and sitting there on this empty table until one day a uh, family come along and there's a little girl and her brother and the mom and dad and no one else was ever noticing Tom but this little girl somehow noticed him and she looked at him and she said mommy why is that tomato plant all by itself and so she persuaded them she didn't have any control over the family she didn't have the money she didn't get to call the shots but because she noticed she persuaded everybody to take an interest and so they all come over and they take a look at Tom and they decide they can give him a forever home and that's exactly what they do. And they bring him back and they put him on the deck in the, in the most sunny spot and they give him just the right amount of water every day to the point that he grows four giant tomatoes for each of the four members of the family and they get to pick them and show their gratitude and say, thank you, Tom, before he realizes that at the end, as he's watching the family enjoy them, that his vines are starting to wither. He never noticed because he was so excited by what he was doing for the family. And it starts to snow. And the snow's cold, but he's warm on the inside and he starts to remember what he was before a tomato plant, and it feels good. And he closes his eyes and he lets sleep come. And that's Tom. So you can buy the book. I guess I just told you the whole story. (laughs) But there are copies there. And it comes, every book comes with a bookmark that has on the back of it some tomato seed paper that you can plant and grow and nurture your own tomatoes, just like Tom has nurtured in the book. So... Uh, I had written this song before I wrote the book. It wasn't written as a theme song for Tom, but it sort of fits so perfectly that that's what I used it for. And uh, it's called The Giant. And um, yeah, so the the premise, I guess, I became a dad a little bit older, and uh, both Jill and I, I guess, we figured the greatest gift you could give your kids would be to make sure they were loved unconditionally, so that no matter where they go, uh, in any room they're at, they know that there's two people at least, their mom and dad, that love them. And, uh, and then I realized that if things go as they should go, there will be a point where we won't be there. And uh, I didn't like the idea of my kids ever being in a room where they didn't have anyone that loved them, uh, potentially. And so I decided maybe the best gift a father could give to his sons or daughters would maybe be to ensure that uh, they love themselves. Because if you could do that, then there's always somebody on your side. And so that's what this song is about. If you're lucky enough, you eventually realize there's a giant inside of you. And if you're luckier still, you get to realize that you get to know that giant. And that's pretty awesome. But the best part is when you get to realize that you are and always were the giant. And uh, that's probably where you're fully actualized. So that's what this song is about. It's called The Giant. No. 
nothing you could do There's nothing you could say To cause the love I have for you to shrink or fade away There's nothing about you I would change But one thing I regret Is that you don't recognize the giant I see as it yet But I'm gonna work on you Yes, I'm gonna work so hard, so hard on you One day you will realize the impact that you made When you look behind and see the giant footprints that remain And you love the one you've always been without being afraid And I'll know my work is through When you see the giant in you There's nothing more I want of you But one thing that I fear Is that you may never love the face that looks back in the mirror And I know that my words are weak But this is where we start And they'll take on new meaning when you know them in your heart Cause I'm gonna work on you Yes, I'm gonna work so hard, so hard on you One day you will realize the impact that you made when you look behind and see the giant footprints that remain And you love the one you've always been without being afraid And I'll know my work is through When you know the giant in nothing you could do there's nothing you could say to cause the love i have for you to shrink or fade away because i'm gonna work on you yes i'm gonna work so hard and one day soon you'll know the giant is you Thank you very much. We'll do one more and then take a quick break and come back and uh, do it all again. I really appreciate you coming out today, folks. Uh, when you do a show and uh, you hope people come, it's not fun when they don't. I can tell you. So this is a, this is a pretty cool uh, experience. You've probably all heard of it, I guess. United Breaks Guitars. Uh, I played with, with my brother Don. I still do. And, uh, and we were playing for 20 years at the time and we had a chance to go to Nebraska. We, we landed in Chicago to deplane and catch our connector and somebody looked out the window and said, oh my God, they're throwing guitars outside. And that changed my life. And, uh, and it, so it turned out my guitar got broken. I used this thing called YouTube that was pretty new. And I said, I promised the airline, Mr. Olwig, the customer service rep at United, that I would write three songs and do three videos about my experience and share them on the internet with my friends. And we would try and get one million views in the next year with all three videos combined. And uh, I don't think she believed me, but, uh, but we ended up shooting it at Station 41 at the Volunteer Fire Department. I called my chief at the time. I said, Ron, I said, I'm shooting this video and we need something that looks like an airport tarmac. Can we use the parking lot of Station 41? And he said, sure. So for $150, we went and made this video at Station 41 with my friends who agreed to do it for free, thankfully. Uh, Curve Productions, Steve Richard, uh, Lara Cassidy, 
and a, a few others were behind the camera and, and made this really good looking video for almost no money and it got popular super quick and became the number one music video in the world for the whole month of July. And the, thank you. <clears throat> and it became the number six most watched video of any kind in the world, uh, period. So it became a social statement and someone started asking me to uh, come and tell my story about it. So I've traveled to 34 countries because of this song now, just having a great time uh, telling people, like I said, to be kind and compassionate and respectful of other people's stuff. And it's turned into all sorts of uh, crazy things. And uh, I believe in sort of uh, sharing good news as it comes along. So this may not happen. It may not happen. But uh, I was in Israel doing a speaking gig last March. And I got a random email from a company in Los Angeles. And they want to do a 90-minute documentary on United Breaks Guitars. And <laughs> so... Uh, that they're going to pitch it to Netflix and HBO and Amazon, I guess, this fall. And, and uh, it may never happen, but it's been pretty cool so far. You never know. So uh, this is the, the song that's taken me places. I, I'm very grateful for it. So we'll take a break and uh, come back again. I flew United Airlines on my way to Nebraska. The plane departed Halifax, connecting in Chicago's O'Hare. While on the ground a passenger said from the seat behind me My God, they're throwing guitars out there The band and I exchanged a look best described as terror At the action on the tarmac And knowing whose projectiles these would be So before I left Chicago I alerted three employees who showed complete indifference towards me. United, United, you broke my Taylor guitar. United, United, some big help you are. You broke it, you should fix it. You're liable just to add it. I should have flown with someone else or gone by car. Sing it if you know it. Cause United breaks guitars. When we landed in Nebraska, I confirmed what I suspected. Mike Taylor had been the victim of a vicious act of malice at O'Hare. And so began a year long saga of past the buck, don't ask me. And I'm sorry, sir, your claim can go nowhere. So do all the airlines people from New York to New Delhi, including kind of Sir Wick, who says the final word from them is no. I've heard all your excuses, and I've chased your wild gooses. And this attitude of yours, I say, must go. Here we go. United, United. You broke my Taylor guitar. United, United. Some big help you are. You broke it, you should fix it. Your libel's just admitted. I should have flown with someone else or gone by car. Say it! Cause you. So, that's about three minutes long. A single is normally like two minutes, two and a half minutes, three minutes. That's a good length. So I probably should have stopped right about there. But then I thought United would probably want me to stop the song right about there. So I said, fuck it. So I won't say that I'll never fly with you again, cause maybe to save the world I probably would, but that won't likely happen. And if it did, I wouldn't bring my luggage, cause you just go and break it into a thousand pieces, just like you broke my heart. When united breaks his heart. Let's bring it home nice and safely, everybody. United, United, you broke my Taylor guitar. United, United, some big hill you are. You broke it, you should fix it. You're liable to 
just had it I should have flown with someone else that's gone by car Cause United breaks guitars Yeah, United breaks guitars One more! Cause United breaks guitars right back. You're listening to Songwriters from Here and Away and an evening with Dave Carroll. Please look him up and download his music, stream it, whatever you have to do. You can also buy his book from davecarrollmusic.com. Now back to a bit of an interview and more music with Dave. Have you been doing any band work lately? Or I saw Sons of Maxwell mm -hmm. doing a gig or two. So Yeah, yeah. so Sons of Maxwell actually during the COVID, we didn't do anything. Uh, my brother's a full-time firefighter, right. and so uh, we just we just didn't play. And uh, but we are playing again. We we're booked to play with the Tim and Symphony Orchestra in April. Oh, so good. we're going back, and uh, we've played with them before. That's where we're from, and uh, we're going to play a full uh, show of of songs that were arranged for symphony. Nice. And uh, that was that was one of the smart things we did years ago. We got some grant money, and we said let's. Let's turn some of these songs into charted symphonic arrangements. So when you have those, you can go and talk to a symphony, and that's a big stumbling block for a lot of people. It's like I got the charts. Well, and you so, know, it's it's that's great because having that material kind of ready to go, and when you get on stage, having the power of a symphony. I mean, I've had horn sections, and I've had twenty five, thirty choir people choir singing behind our songs, but mm -hmm. having a symphony must just blow your mind when yeah. you're up there. <laughs> I found, I found, we did it with the uh, uh, Symphony Nova Scotia right. before, and that was a little intimidating almost because I got to read music, really, and th that's exactly what they do. They don't vamp out, and so it's, it's two worlds coming together, and you're kind of on, on their turf, and, and if you miss a, a lyric yeah. or you miss it, there's no going around. You can't, go, like, you can't <laughs> go to Jamie over on the guitar and, and say, say, take another eight, yeah, buddy, yeah, yeah, and yeah. it's like... The co they're gone, right? Yeah. But you're absolutely right to have yeah. that kind of power and hear your music coming through. It lifts you to an unbelievable level. It's, it's, it's nothing yeah. like it. I, I'm, I'm envious, for sure. That's great that you're doing another one. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you for coming back. As I mentioned, my parents, Max and Sharon, are here tonight. There's my mom and there's my dad. There is a Maxwell. There's this, we're the sons of Maxwell because of, of uh, my dad. Well, my mom did all the hard work. My dad took the glory and the name. They've been coming to our shows since day one. One of our first shows in Timmins, Ontario, Don and I played on a patio of a bar called Casey's. And we, were, we weren't good enough to get inside, just playing the patio. That's the best we could do. And I think we got paid $150 or something like that. And uh, it was an afternoon gig on a Sunday. And my mom and dad wanted to ensure that we got invited back, so their bar tab was enormous. <laughs> and we got, we got home at like 8 o'clock at night, and they were fast asleep. <laughs> so the, the policy used to be, uh, you know, if you're playing a show, get us near the bar. Now it's get us near the bathrooms. <laughs> <laughs> Only my dad, apparently. Just my dad. So uh, United Breaks Guitars changed my life in a bunch of ways, but my favorite song for a lot of reasons was the second one, United Breaks Guitars Song 2, because there's a trilogy. And, uh, and so we, uh, the second one, we wanted it to be bigger and grander than the first one, because we only had about eight people working on the front of the camera in the first one, and, and uh, so we wanted like 100 people. We wanted it to be like the, the Lord of the Rings of customer service. <laughs> and uh, so we asked on Facebook, 100 people, whoever wants to be, we, we need we need uh, 100 volunteers, and we instantly had 100 volunteers. And we said, we can't tell you where we're going to shoot at the secret location for United Breaks Guitar Song 2 because we didn't have a license to do any of this, and we didn't want just 1,000 people showing up if that would happen. So we had to keep the secret location secret, and we said, but the, one, the two things you have to do is you have to show up uh, wearing a white shirt and a white hat, and we'll tell you at the secret location on the secret day. And so uh, the night before the, the concert, uh, or the, before the uh, shooting of the video, we called the 100 people and we said, okay, the secret location is the Waverly Fire Hall. Mm -hmm. We went, went back to where we did the first one. 
and there's the parking lot and the building and then a green space at the back. And uh, we wanted to use that, all of that. And so we had everyone show up in a white shirt and a white hat. And I see some of them here tonight. And, uh, and we had a, a, the big culmination at the end was on, we were gonna use this scissor lift. We wanted a platform. And so we got McFarland's Rentals to donate it. And it was a 60 foot scissor lift and had the camera up there with Steve and Lara uh, with one of those megaphones yelling at everybody on the ground. We have one shot to get this right because we were worried about the light, right? My 88 year old grandmother was there. There was all these uh, young people and people I didn't know, people, friends and that, and we were concerned. And it was a really hot day. So uh, they're yelling at them from the top saying, okay, you stand here, 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 because we wanted them to stand in the shape of a perfectly intact guitar, like a chalk outline, because the first video has a chalk outline in the ground and, uh, and I'm overcome with grief and someone comes and takes the guitar away and there's the chalk outline of the dead guitar. So we wanted to duplicate that for the second one. So uh, this, we shot the video all day. At the end, we told everyone to stand in the shape of a perfectly intact guitar. And they said, we have one shot to get this right because the light's going. And so they said, Steve said, uh, the uh, music's gonna play. We're gonna say action, the music will play. We want everyone to stand exactly where you are. Don't change your foot position, but move, dance and celebrate. And if you know the words now, sing, sing along. And then we said, we're gonna say action again. And when that happens, we want the last 15 people or so making up this part of the headstock of the guitar to shuffle their way and break the guitar. And, and then the last move was, I'm standing with a bunch of people in the sound hole portion holding another guitar. I look up at the camera, I put the guitar down and walk away because the big finishing move was to have a cargo van with United on the top come in and run over the guitar three times. <laughs> and that's how it was supposed to end. So they said, okay, one take, here we go. Everyone knows their parts, they said action, and everyone starts dancing and having a great time. And they said action again, and the last 15 people, they shuffle this way and break the neck of the guitar, and then they all get off the field and leave me there, and I put the guitar down, I look up the camera, I walk away, but there's still two people there, right? It was a, a woman and a, holding up my grandmother under the arm like that, because my grandmother didn't get the memo, right? All she heard was, don't ruin the video! That's what she heard. So I had to walk up to her, and, uh, and, and it looks like, because you can only see from the top down, we're having a nice conversation, but she's actually telling me off in British. She's saying, David, nobody told me anything. I'm not happy. And we walk up. So there are no second takes, and if you watch United Brace Guitar Song 2, you can see that. And uh, so we didn't know if it would be more popular or less. It turned out it was, it was less popular, but still interesting. And uh, the phone was ringing off the hook, and I'm driving home about two weeks after we released the video, and I get this random phone call from somebody saying uh, she represents the movie industry here in Halifax, and Olympia Dukakis, the Oscar-winning actress, is coming to Halifax to shoot a feature film. And she says, we're looking for actors. And I pull over, like, I'm, my life is like Forrest Gump, I'm waiting for the question I know is coming, and she says, we want to know if your grandmother's available. <laughs> we loved her work in video too, they said. So I race home, she's living with my parents. I say, Grandma, Grandma, you're gonna be in an Olympia to caucus movie. And she says, what on earth do I need to be in the Olympics for? <laughs> I said, no, Grandma, it's Olympia to caucus movie. And, and so I explained it to her and she said, okay. So about two weeks later, I took her down to the Dartmouth waterfront where she was in a, in a empty building that was supposed to look like a hospital. And she was the sleeping lady in bed too. For <laughs> three hours, she had to open and close her eyes on command and they paid her like 150 bucks. And she came home and she declared, I'm retiring from acting, David. I like to keep a low profile. <laughs> so not long after that, though, my grandmother, Doreen, uh, was diagnosed with terminal lung cancer. And uh, they said that she had about nine months to live. And she did. She lived that and maybe a little bit more. And, uh, she was a big loss to our family because she was such a leader and, and uh, had such an interesting life. And uh, we learned in those last nine months how to die with dignity. because She died with tremendous dignity where she never took the medication or, or things that would not really save her. They would just maybe make uh, tomorrow uh, a possibility at the expense of today. And she said, I'm gonna live each day until there are no more days. So that's what she did. <coughs> and uh, about two weeks before she passed away, I had this idea, what if I could write a song for her that would sum up her life in her 88 years in four minutes or less, which is hard to do. And, uh, and so I took a shot at it and I approached it from the idea that she had three names in her life. 
She was born at Tugwood, and then she married my grandfather, who was a soldier in World War II. They met in England, and then she came over here, and uh, she outlived my grandfather, and she got married to an Anglican minister, and she outlived him, too, after 25 years. And uh, so she had three names in her life, and, and uh, so the most important things in her life were uh, the family, the church, and uh, the queen, not necessarily in that order. And so this uh, song I got to uh, play her the recording of. I brought her to my studio. She sat in my chair in front of the speakers, and she listened to this song for the first time, and she cried for the first time that I'd ever seen. And uh, she said, I don't deserve it. And of course, the people who would say such a thing do deserve the songs. So um, this is called God Save Doreen. Doreen Lucy Tugwood started breathing September 1 in 1922 In a place called Romney Marsh In a little part of England known to few Her canvas started out as plain as any but a steady hand with paint so rich in love Produced a masterpiece Framed by family and faith in God above Send her victorious Happy and glorious Long to reign over us, God save our Queen. Doreen Lucy Carroll, she got married to a soldier sent to fight a world war. Sailed in secret convoy to his home in Canada in 44. She landed safe in Halifax, a stranger. Just 21 with a daughter and a son. She took the train to Arm Prior and waited for the war to be done. Send her victorious, happy and glorious. Long to reign over us, God save our queen. She met her share of obstacles with stoic English grace. Two husbands and a daughter have been readying her place. And when the good Lord calls her, she won't question where she goes. We'll know, we'll know, we'll know. Doreen Lucy Daly has been painting Living nearly four score years and ten A mother, wife and friend A loyal Christian English woman to the end Now there are those who measure life in dollars but Doreen knows it's love you leave behind And on her family tree her love abounds In her 25 new lines
send her victorious, happy and glorious, long to reign over us, God save our Queen, God save Doreen. Thanks. So Dawn and I, when in our days of travel, and we did a lot of breakfast television shows because we were a little bit on the outside of the music industry and it was, it was a great way to get a showcasing opportunity to introduce ourselves to people all over uh, Atlanta, Canada. And they have breakfast shows in different spots in the country too. So we found ourselves uh, in Calgary one time. So we were jet lagged and we just got there and we were doing a breakfast television show that morning. And uh, normally they want really high energy songs and that's what we would always give them. And uh, for some reason I thought, uh, I said, Don, let's do this song called Mile a Minute. It's a slow love song, and uh, Don's nervous about that kind of thing, and, and we're, we're, I sort of suggested that while we're kind of on camera, like they're getting ready, we're not on TV yet, and he's like, I don't know if we should do that, Dave. I don't know, we shouldn't be doing that one. And, and I said, well, be, we're good, we're good. And uh, so the song starts, and I can tell he's not 100%. I can know my brother like the back of my hand, right? And I can see him right there, and I can tell he's sort of looking, and he's fidgeting, he's not really comfortable. So now I'm off my game. I'm not really paying attention to the song. I'm paying attention to his discomfort, which is dangerous when you're trying to remember lyrics. And uh, there's a lot of lyrics, not a lot of spaces to breathe in this song. And so I had to swallow, because Dom was making me nervous. And, and I realized, I started doing the math, and I thought, I'm not gonna make it to when I'm gonna be able to swallow next. And so I'm fighting it, and I feel my eyes glazing over, and then a tear starts coming down, and then I start choking on my own words on live television. And, uh, and so Don jumps in, and he starts singing the lyrics to the song, and I sort of clear my throat, and I sort of recover, and we finish the song together, and, and they say, okay, we're good to commercial, and they start walking around, and Don's like, what the fuck just happened to her? And I said, I don't know what happened, I was choking, that's what happened, and we're having this argument. And then these two fem female producers come out, and they're crying. They're like, that was so beautiful. <laughs> they, they said you were so overcome by the emotion in the song that your brother had to lift you up. <laughs> and we looked at each other like, what? <laughs> but we took it. This is called Mile a Minute. myself today the lady I'm in love with said she feels the same way and ever since then I've been hovering ten feet in the air and I haven't quite come down yet you should see the view from here my heart goes a mile a minute when I kiss her and I If I die tomorrow, years before my time, I leave happy knowing she'd been mine. Now all the girls before her are just fading memories, and I'm altogether different from the man I used to be. There are things that I know I will never understand But if our lives are like a puzzle She completes the man I am And my heart goes a mile a minute When I kiss her and I know That I love her and I'll never let her go And if I die tomorrow 
years before my time I leave happy knowing she'd been mine and if she takes me away so I'll ask for I'm not myself today The lady I'm in love with Said she feels the same way and Ever since then I've been hovering Ten feet in the air And I haven't quite come down yet You should see the view from here and My heart goes a mile a minute When I kiss her If I die tomorrow, years before my time, I'd leave happy knowing she'd been mine. I'd leave happy knowing she'd been mine. So, hey, where did you start? Did you start playing guitar or piano when you were a kid? As a kid, uh, we give the credit to to our dad actually to get us started. So we oh, call okay. ourselves Sons of Maxwell because our dad is Max. Oh, okay. And gotcha. uh, and our dad used to come in when Don and I shared a room. He would come in with his guitar, and he didn't know all the chords to all the songs and didn't know all the words. But his policy was if you don't know the the words you play louder, and if you don't know the music, sing louder. But don't let that get in the way of having a good time. So we we would sing for you know quite a while. We'd be going to bed at a certain at a respectable time, and we'd go to sleep at a irrespectable time, right? Because okay. we'd stay so long. And uh, yeah, so we we learned to love music for the fun of it from our dad. And then I played a little piano uh, yeah. uh, for grade four or five, and then I didn't really play anything until. Uh, band maybe grade mm -hmm. seven and eight but then i didn't touch anything until university and i picked up a guitar and uh just wanted to play and it was before right. the internet and so i had to teach myself how to play guitar and and get found a chord book and that's how i got into it and don and i ended up going to carlton university and and while i was there i bought my guitar we entered a talent contest right and we had to learn six songs and uh and we didn't really know them that well but we tied for first place oh great. in this thing and so we got to come back and and uh, we we played that first night, and uh, I was hooked. Never and looked you, back. Yeah, yeah, bit the bait, and off yep. you go. Got they you. gave us money for this. I said, yeah, <laughs> real money. <laughs> we, can, we can do this and yeah. have fun and get yeah. paid. Yeah. Compass is spinning You've gone and misplaced your faith Running solo In a three-legged obstacle race A fickle dance between Conviction and compromise And the lies That you spin You're caught in a war you won't win Cause there's love all around and How will it feel once you've found You've gone and let your guard down
You paint on a canvas With colors you can't pronounce You're praying for answers And you hope that it counts All the things you stood behind Are so far behind you now And the lies That you spin You're caught in the war you won't win Cause there's love All around And how will it be once you've found You've gone and let your guard down And all your cape crusading Look at all the time you've wasted Living in your armor plated World that serves to hide the light And shield it from your eyes And the lies that you spend You're caught in a war to God. couple of requests uh, for this next song, and uh, I guess United Brace Guitarist is the song that um, is kind of tied to me. It's one that most people have heard, but sometimes I wonder if United Brace Guitarist didn't happen so other people could not could maybe hear this song. I've gotten a lot of messages from people that said it was important to them. They were, some people were going to kill themselves, and they listened to this song and didn't. I received a, a message from a girl. She showed me her playlist. She printed it off, and she had played uh, United Breaks Guitars like 6,000 times. And, uh, and that's when I wished royalties were better with Spotify. <laughs> and uh, the one that stands out for me is, is uh, I was at home and I got an email from a woman who said, Dave, it's 8 o'clock in the morning and I just got back from the hospital where my mom's been in palliative care for a long time. And uh, she saw your video, United Breaks Guitars. And so she wanted... Uh, she listened to it, it made her laugh, and she said, I want to know what else this boy's written. So the, she said, uh, my mother said, order a CD. So she ordered it from my mother. My mother mailed uh, this woman to California a CD, and uh, it had uh, this song called Now on it. And Now is a song about uh, living in the present moment. And it was inspired by a book uh, called The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. And in this book, he talks about how uh, if you're worried about things that have happened in the past, or you're worried about things that haven't happened yet, you're anxious about the future, then you're technically insane, he said, because the only moment that we have is this one present moment. And, uh, and so this woman explained that that became her mother's favorite song and seemed to soothe her. And then uh, she said, last night my mom said, put Dave's song on like we were old buddies. And she said, we listened to the song, and then when the song was over, I opened my eyes, but my mother had passed away. And. Uh, this is a song called Now. When there's no way out, there's still a way through. So don't. Surrender to moments, the things as they are, from the gaps in your catch 22s. When there's no way out, there's still a way through. Cause now's all there is. 
so peaceful and still And now you don't worry about what's happened or what will Cause now never ends And now's never been So today, are you in the st going into the studio anytime soon for more recording? Or, uh, well, I have a studio in my home, so that that's the beauty of getting my ideas down. I never right. really record full tracks in my place. I do right. the things I do at my place, and then maybe Jamie Robinson or Christy and Eddie or uh, Scott yeah. Ferguson. Lots of work with those guys. Yeah. And um, and yeah, so I'm I'm always writing. But I don't really have a, an idea of what I would do for the, another record right now, and I'm not right. even sure that I'm going to put out another record. Right, right. Because the, the way the way that music gets consumed right now is in bundles singles. of twelve, right? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I think, yeah. So in the studio, you're sitting there. You you have you've crafted your song on guitar and voice, and you sit down with your DAW, your digital audio workstation, mm -hmm. your software, mm -hmm. and you plunk in a time signature, a, a tempo, and you do guitar and voice, or do you lay down drums, tr fake drum tracks or any of that, or you just do guitar and voice and send that off? Uh, I actually use my, my iPhone to, to get okay. my ideas down, just yeah. the, the voice notes. Yeah. And if that passes the test and, and I get to a point that I think that's worth laying down, I'll, I'll then pull out the, the gear and get something with a little reverb on it and, right. and test that out. And then if it gets... Uh, passes that test then i'll get serious and put a right put a click down and do, do and the whole thing and then yeah. send off yeah. start getting uh, some of the other pros on the other instruments to do their j master yeah. piece yeah yeah right cool well i i hope more singles come up i'm looking forward to it, it yeah. there's 
like I, like I said, somebody said, are you, you're not a musician anymore? And there will never be a time where I'm not a musician. Yeah. I'll always be writing and I'll, I'll be doing something. And you retire when you hit the grave. That's right. right? Yeah. yeah. And uh, it's, it's odd to see people, uh, it's tough to see people categorize music and to categorize humans. And it limits what the possibilities are. So mm. I really respect the fact that you can do more than one thing, yeah. and more people should delve into that, I think, because it makes your music better, too, right? And Thank if you, you're, Robert. It's like Kaylin being an artist. When she uh, writes a good song, it inspires a good piece of artwork, maybe, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah you get the same, the same lift, regardless of the art form, right? When you create right. something from nothing and... It feels good to you. It doesn't matter if really if anybody else thinks so. But, you know, we've all written songs that we know are not going to be on the radio. They're not going to be loved by other people, but they might be special to us for whatever reason. Right. And you sleep at night, going to sleep like a farmer, farmer tired, thinking, yeah, that was a good day's work. Yeah, right? yeah. And yeah. It, it, very much so. And it could be, uh, for me, it's woodworking. Mm. I don't have a woodworking space anymore, but I always enjoyed that. And, and you may never use it or just give it away but it's always nice to have the the completion of something you created mm. yeah so is there anything else you wanted to talk about eh? um i'm going to scotland and have you ever done those trips where you oh, lead, a, lead a trip yeah no i haven't we haven't led a trip but we're going to host a cruise in uh february so we like booked in the Caribbean or like our Caribbean riv river yeah. Caribbean, yeah. And and you're so you're going to Scotland with some of your friends and fans and family, I guess. Yeah, you can take up to twenty two people, so it's almost sold out at this point. But it's a uh, it's a bus trip in a sense that it takes you to three locations, but it's not a daily bus excursion. It's the longest bus ride is two hours, but there'll be three locations and you stay for three days each. Oh, good. And yeah. I'll sing a, a I'll do a concert, but there'll be three other concerts with really good Scottish. Uh, musicians, right? Great. So uh, it's a music-based thing. And then I guess we'll go to uh, Outlander, the, where they shoot Outlander. Oh, cool. So I'm going to be imagining uh, a bunch of uh, drunk wives with their wine smacking the rocks saying, come on, get, get, get me there, get me there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you get to toss the caber or anything? Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, well, Chuck Brodsky does a similar thing. He, he got me into this. He's oh, good. The, yeah. Good, good. Yeah. Chuck, Chuck brought my name forward for that. Great. Good. Yeah. Well, He's been be doing fun. that a long time, hasn't he? Years. Yeah. Yeah, and he does two or three a year sometimes. So, mm. yeah, he's over there right now, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, well, good. And what's your website address? Uh, everything goes under davecarrollmusic.com. Okay. But you got to add the music, because if it doesn't, there's a lot of Dave Carrolls. Yeah. And uh, all the Dave Carrolls would like to eliminate the... Uh, British Dave Carroll, who's got DaveCarroll.com. Oh, okay. but, <laughs> yeah. but uh, well, I'm DaveCarrollMusic.com. And that's so that's Dave Carroll, C A R R O L L, music.com. Right. Good. Yeah. There's actually a Dave Carroll with one L uh, that's a speaker as well. Oh, that's right. I, I, I came across that because. Did was, you see that? Yeah, I did. Yeah, see so that. he ends up taking a speaking gig. They thought it was me, and the, the buyer didn't know he wasn't this Dave Carroll oh. until he started speaking. And, oh, okay. uh, which uh, was a little weird, right? I bet. Yeah. 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 And yeah, so I guess you have to double check all the time. I wonder if I should have been more famous or more successful. He was probably <laughs> stealing all my gigs. <laughs> well, those times I thought I wasn't busy. It's because that other day, single L Dave Carroll's taking my work. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Well, I, I look forward to hearing some tunes. So thank you very much for chatting with me here at the Carlton. My pleasure. Thanks, Robert. Thanks, man. Well, I'd like to thank you all for coming out tonight, folks. I know it's a Sunday. It's a hurricane Sunday, and uh, life gets back to normal pretty quick now in September. So uh, I had no idea what was going to happen when we took a Sunday show at the Carlton, and uh, it sold out in four days. So thank you very much for that. My best years in the music business were with my brother, Don, and uh, we wrote this song and, uh, and toured it everywhere. And uh, it's about having fun in Nova Scotia in the summertime. I, uh, we, we were from Ontario, and we got our start in Ottawa. We came out to the East Coast a few times, and we went to this showcase where it was all university programmers, and one university programmer named Jason Simmons was there. He represented St. FX. And he's like, boys, we got to get you St. FX. So he brought us in, and he put us at everything that St. FX could have a singer at. He put Sons of Maxwell in. 
and, and he was very much responsible for creating this environment where we, where we felt welcome here before we moved here. And, um, and he ended up becoming, he graduated and became my roommate for a while up in Clayton, Clayton Park. So we had our two-bedroom two apartment, and uh, I was writing in my studio, which was my bedroom in my two-bedroom apartment at the time. And I had this idea for a song about a, sort of an anthem about having fun in Nova Scotia in the summertime, and I, I just, just finished it. And he walked in, and I said, Jason, because he, he was in the inner circle, I said, sit down and listen to this. And he was a serious music guy, and uh, he listened very intently. So he sat there in the bed, and I played it for him, and he's just watching me. And I finished it, and he's like dead silent. And I said, what do you think? And he says, buddy, that's got Cape Britain fucking written all over it. <laughs> so this is called Oceanside again, and thank you very much for coming out, folks. I love the ocean, I'm from Nova Scotia, and summer's in the air, and I'm heading to my cabin where crazy things happen when my friends meet me there. Rush hour ain't pretty, the heat in the city, it can get me down sometimes, so I'm seeking relief with my friend Alex Keith and a great big bottle of wine. Come on! Ranting and raving, we're misbehaving, but that's all right now and then. Getting tight, having fun, we ain't hurting anyone. Oceanside again. The night is falling darkness is calling but fun's just begun cause we'll sit around the fire until the wee hours and greet the morning sun we'll dance a little cause Tom's got his fiddle and he'll be ripping out a reel and try as I may no words can convey how good Renting and raving and misbehaving, but that's all right now and then. Getting tight, having fun, we ain't hurting anyone. Ocean side again. Well, I've had a great time, the weekend's been so fine. And I'm sad it has to end But I hope and I pray We soon make our way To this old cabin again To be renting and raving And misbehaving But that's alright now and then Getting tight, having fun We ain't hurting anyone Oceanside again Come on, one more time! Renting and raving, we're misbehaving, but that's all right now and then. Getting tight, having fun, we ain't hurting anyone. Oceanside again. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for coming out. Thank you. Thank you. One more? Okay. There's, not, there's nowhere to go here. I was hoping you would do that. <laughs> I couldn't go anywhere. Don and I were on the trip we went to Nebraska where the guitar got broken. We, fin we, had, we did a show and we left the stage and we were lucky enough to get a standing ovation, but we were standing behind this flag so you could see our legs. <laughs> and we just sort of stood there and then, then we came out again. It's a little awkward. <laughs> it's 
So here's one you might know. Uh, I didn't write it. This is another, this is a good sing-along one. But uh, during the pandemic, remember we used to have bubble families? Well, we had the bark houses. They live up the street from us. And, um, and so it was important to, to, to mix with your friends and that sort of thing. And Laurie and Denny have a PA right in their living room. They just keep it there the whole time. So there was a lot of music. We would go there and just sing songs for the fun of it. And this is one of the ones that uh, I wish I'd written. And we used to sing this one a lot, and we still do. So uh, it's a feel-good song. Neil Finn is the songwriter, and, and uh, he's probably my favorite writer. really close tonight I feel like I am moving inside her standing in the dark I feel like I'm beginning to know her let it go I'll be waiting when you call and whenever I fall Hiding from me now There's something in the way that you're talking Words don't sound right And I feel you all moving inside me Go I'll be there when you call everybody thanks to john for doing the sound and thanks to the carlton for having me in safe home and thank you for listening to songwriters from here and away and a dave carroll today please keep tuning in we'll see you next time